Garages in the 1980s were becoming a place to store all of the things you wanted out of the house. So they were essentially a catch-all, but also the garage was a place to tinker. So it naturally became an extension of the home, or at the very least, a place where you could escape. So let's venture down the rabbit hole of randomness to see what things were found in a garage in the 1980s. What would a 1980s garage be without at least a few rusty paint cans? These cans might have seen a lot of action in your house, or they may have never been touched. For some, helping dad repaint the living room or touching up the garden fence are fond memories of those weekend projects. For others, those old paint cans may have just been taking up space on a shelf or tucked away in a corner. But there is no doubt that a rusty can or two could be found somewhere. After a long day of working on projects in the garage, you'd sometimes find an old sofa plopped where a car should be, and it was the perfect spot to relax. This wasn't just any sofa, it was well-worn and broken in, so it fit right in in the garage. It was a place where countless conversations took place, and maybe even a nap or two. The fabric might have been faded, and the rips may have been mended with duct tape, but it was the perfect spot when you wanted to get out of the house. At Recollection Road, I believe preserving the past is incredibly important, and our friends at Legacy Box do too. So much so, they've offered my viewers a code for 55% off. In today's digital age, analog media like VHS tapes and film reels are fading, risking the loss of cherished memories due to things like mold, dust, and time. But Legacy Box, trusted by over 1.5 million families, offers a simple and safe solution to protect your memories before it's too late. With Legacy Box, you can convert your analog treasures into digital memories effortlessly. Send your VHS tapes, camcorder tapes, and pictures to Legacy Box, and like magic, receive back your originals and digital copies for easy enjoyment, sharing, and organization. And here's the kicker. For a limited time, enjoy an exclusive 55% discount at LegacyBox.com slash recollection. Don't let your memories fade. Preserve your past today with Legacy Box. Buy today to take advantage of this exclusive offer and send them in whenever you're ready. Go to LegacyBox.com slash recollection to save 55% while supplies last. If your garage was used by your dad to store his extensive tool collection, then the chances of him having a pinup calendar hanging somewhere in the garage was high. These were usually made or sponsored by a tool company like Snap-on or Rigid, and they were the perfect garage decor. Each month featured a different pinup model, and you could flip through it to find your favorite month. These eye-catching pinup calendars were often found hanging near the workbench, and they did a pretty good job of capturing the style of the times from those special years. Speaking of the workbench, no 80s garage was complete without a pegboard adorned with craftsman tools. This was how your craftsman tools from Sears were kept organized and at the ready. From wrenches and pliers to hammers and screwdrivers, everything had its place. You could always count on finding what you needed, whether you were tuning up a bike or fixing the car. The garage pegboard with its crumbling corners and overloaded holes was a symbol that you were ready for any 1980s DIY challenge. Now, if you were growing up in the 1980s, you'll remember that the garage was often overflowing with bikes. It didn't matter if it was a 10-speed or a new BMX bike with pegs. This is how kids got around the neighborhood, and getting a new bike for Christmas meant freedom and adventure, as most of the time kids were outside playing. If the bikes weren't piled up in the front yard, then they could most likely be found parked in the garage, which made airing up the tires or adjusting the handlebars that much easier. Many homes in the 1980s had a two-car garage, but there was often only room for one because dad kept some form of a project car in one of the spots. It may have been his first car, or maybe it was the shell of a dream car he always wanted to restore. Occasionally, it might get worked on, tinkering with the engine, or maybe doing some body work, but most of the time it just took up space. You were lucky if the seats were still in it because it gave you another place to sit when hanging out with your friends in the garage. For the younger kids, nothing beat the thrill of riding your big wheel down the driveway and turning the corner onto the sidewalk as the wheels skid out from underneath you. 
This plastic tricycle, with its oversized front wheel and slick back tires, was a favorite for cruising around the block, especially if you had a big wheel that was branded with your favorite TV show, like the Dukes of Hazard or Knight Rider. The sound of those plastic tires on pavement and the speed that you could make that thing move was astounding. Those were the days. Lawn chairs were another item that were always stored in the garage. They were usually these foldable webbed chairs that came out during barbecues or picnics. A pair of these were perfect for those summer evenings when you could sit out and watch a storm pass while enjoying a cold drink from the beer fridge. These aluminum chairs were lightweight too, which was the best part, and these specific chairs may still be the best lawn chairs you've ever owned. For any homeowner with a garage, an old coffee can was the perfect place to store your random bolts, nails, and screws. If you needed that one specific screw for a project, chances are you could find it by digging through one of these cans. It wasn't quick, but after dumping it out and sorting through all the bits of metal, you could usually find what you needed. Then everything would be scooped up and put back in the old coffee can. After relaxing in your favorite lawn chairs, let's not forget about the importance of having a beer fridge in the garage. This was usually an old, beat-up kitchen fridge that was moved to the garage after the kitchen got an upgrade. But it was everybody's favorite because it was kept stocked with beer and sodas. If your garage was a spot where friends would hang out, then this was a must-have. And plenty of the garages around the neighborhood had them. If you were working on a project in the garage, then you most likely had some music playing. An old transistor radio or even a boombox might be found sitting on a shelf, often playing some classic rock hits, whether it was The Eagles, Led Zeppelin, or REO Speedwagon. This radio, tuned to your favorite radio station, provided the perfect soundtrack for time spent getting stuff done. The crackling static from the antenna and the radio commercials just added to that charm. When it came to fun and games in the garage, you could always find something to keep you busy. A dartboard was a popular choice for this, and the metal tip darts added to the fun. After a few too many trips to the beer fridge, just hitting the board was a feat. The entire wall surrounding the board was covered in holes from errant darts, missing their target. It seems like every garage also had some random wood pile stacked up in a corner. Most of the time it was from the offcuts or leftovers from a previous woodworking project. And after the wood had sat there for years, it was the perfect place for young boys to find materials to put together a makeshift bike ramp. There was also a cinder block involved too, which also might be hiding in the garage. But having a random wood pile was always useful, and it sometimes saved you from making a trip to the lumber yard for a small board. If you've stuck around this long, don't worry, there's still more. But I wanted to let you know that we have some retro merchandise available too. Just click the link in the description to head over to the store. The Metal Coleman Cooler was another must-have. The dented metal cooler went everywhere, road trips, barbecues, or maybe even camping. This Coleman cooler was durable, making it a trusted companion for any outdoor adventure. These things were made well, so the one that you had may have been 10 or 20 years old by the time the 1980s rolled around. They came in green and red, and if you were lucky, you had the matching gallon jug, too. If smoking was your thing, then an ashtray and cigarettes would always be found in the garage. For many 1980s households, the garage was a designated smoking spot, so the ashtray saw plenty of use. Smoking was still a part of the social fabric at the time, and so this just gave you another reason to spend more time in your garage. Finally, how many of you collected beer bottles or beer cans? The garage was a place to display them proudly, either on a shelf or simply lined up on the windowsill. This collection was a testament to your love of beer and your dedication to making drinking it a true hobby. Your bottle or can collection also added to the decor of the garage, so adding to your collection was both fun and functional. Let me know in the comments if I missed anything, and make sure to check the description of this video for links to pick up a t-shirt and sign up for the newsletter. Thank you to our loyal Patreon supporters listed here. Visit patreon.com slash recollectionroad to join the club. As always, thank you so much for watching.